Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sarah Sutton. I'm an indie author of two books. One is a friend's to lovers romance titled What Are Friends For? And the other one is a fake relationship romance titled Out of My League. You can find the links about those books in the description box below. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing a Q&A. And the last time I did a Q&A, I had this little furry fuzzball right here and I thought why not every single time we do a Q&A have the cute little puppy who is staring out the window. What are you looking at? Have the cute little puppy be a guest star. How fun would that be? Yeah? Anyway, hopefully it's just Mark. But today, yes, like I said, is a Q&A. I asked you guys some questions over on Instagram um, about writing related stuff and y'all came through. If you want to be able to answer questions, um, I do these Q&A things on Instagram um, pretty, not that often, I, would, I don't know. If you want a chance to have ask a question for next time, be sure to follow me over on Instagram because we're gonna do this again sometime soon. Probably for the release of If The Room Fits, I'll do another Q&A. Without further ado, let's hop in to the questions. Okay, so I'm just gonna read the questions off, um, but you know who you are if you ask these questions. Just so it's a little bit easier because I don't really have the names written down. It's just the usernames, and I know that's probably not the best, but let's hop into it. Okay, so how long have you been writing? I have been writing since I was like in the first grade. So is that six or seven years old? And I feel like that's just a strange answer. I've been writing seriously probably since middle school. Throughout elementary, you know, I was a kid. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I think probably seventh grade, I started to write seriously because that's when I met um, a few friends that were writers kind of like me and we kind of encouraged each other and bounced ideas off of each other. So from middle school on, I have been writing seriously. Middle school is when I kind of realized this is what I want to do. I want to be an author. I want to publish books. And so yeah, very fun. <laughs> do you plan to write anything besides contemporary? Yes. I do write some stuff outside of contemporary right now, but it's really just for fun. Um, so I guess, I guess the question is, do I ever plan to publish anything outside of contemporary? And I would say it's a possibility. I wouldn't say no. That's the thing. I wouldn't say I wouldn't do this. I think, I think if the opportunity came and I felt really passionate about my books that I've written, I would publish them. But I don't know. My heart right now is kind of like hardcore in contemporary. I've got books planned until 2023 in contemporary. So I think for right now, at least, it's going to stick to contemporary. But in the future, who knows? Do you have an all-time favorite book or one that impacted your life a lot? And I would say yes, I do. I'm actually going to be coming out with a video um, very, very soon about my top five favorite books of all time. Yeah, that video is already out, so I'll have it linked right here. After finishing a first draft, how long do you let your manuscript sit before writing the second? And oh my gosh, you guys. So I, I will definitely say you need to let that manuscript sit for time, <laughs> you know? I typically do anywhere from two weeks to two months to let it sit. This past um, draft that I wrote, Telling the Perfect Lie, I didn't have a chance to let it sit because I pushed, I, I set my deadlines too close together. So I had to jump in from draft one to draft two, which I definitely do not recommend. Don't recommend it. Because letting it sit helps you to come back to it with a fresh perspective and new eyes. And that time in between, it can kind of jog a thought where, oh, I like this the way that this plot could evolve this way instead of this way. You know what I'm saying? So having some space away from the book, from the manuscript, is really important because, like I said, it gives you a fresh perspective. And so I would definitely say between two weeks to two months is my norm. This past manuscript was not normal at all. And I hate that I had to rush it because I, I don't like rushing the process at all. I don't think it... I don't think it harmed my product. Like, I don't think I did anything like a bad job, but I definitely didn't feel like feeling rushed. Which character was the hardest to write? So, let's think about this. So, I'm going to just use um, the characters from my, my two books, What Are Friends For and Out of My League. That way you guys know kind of who I'm talking about. Hopefully I'm in focus. I can't really tell. But I think out of those characters, I struggled to write Scott. <laughs> Because the first time I wrote him, I wrote him as a massive jerk. He's a, still a massive jerk, but I wrote him as such like a comical massive jerk. Like, 
stupidly stupid, you know? He was mean for no reason for being mean, you know? I, it was, he was just a, he was just a bad character in the first few drafts. So I definitely struggled writing Scott. I think I also struggled writing Walsh because that was the first book that I ever wrote um, seriously contemporary. So this was the book that I knew I wanted to publish. So Walsh was kind of like my first main contemporary male love interest. I had a hard time crafting his character because I... There was nothing for me to go off of because before I was writing One Direction fan fiction and so I, I knew who Harry Styles was so I could write about Harry Styles. But Walsh Hunter who is he? I don't know. So it was kind of hard to get into his headspace and why he would do certain things. Walsh and Scott were two that I, two boys that I kind of struggled with. What platforms do you recommend using for publishing for the first time? So I use three platforms for publishing. I use KDP to publish my Amazon ebook. I use Ingram Spark to publish my paperbacks. I also use KDP for paperback as well, sorry. And then I use Draft to Digital to promote my ebooks wide, to distribute them wide. I used to use Ingram Spark for the ebook distribution, but I got no money from Ingram Spark. I don't know if their distribution process is just. I don't know how different it is from Draft to Digital, or if Draft to Digital has more people that they distribute to, not sure. But ever since I switched to Draft to Digital, I have noticed an increase in sales. So they are actually distributing my book and it's helpful. And their tracking system is a lot more user friendly. So I definitely recommend Draft Digital. So those three. I, I, I published Water Friends 4 on Google Play a few weeks ago. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna do it for all my books. That answer is another question. It says, who do you go through for print? I use um, Ingram Spark for my print copies to distribute them to Barnes and Noble um, and anywhere other anywhere print copies are sold that way. And then I use KDP to do the print copies through Amazon because it's just easier that way. Who do you relate to more, Sophia or Remy? And I would definitely say Sophia. So Sophia is a character that I had written kind of like based off of me. At the time when I was writing it, I was like, that's typically what I did for fan fiction too. I kind of modeled the main character after me because you know, naturally. But Sophia's changed and evolved since those first few drafts. So she she and I are not as close as we were when we, the book started out. Um, but I would still definitely relate to her more because she has her dreams and her goals and she sometimes struggles with the, um, I don't want to say morality of it, but she struggles to put others first before herself. And I, I'm introverted. I, I feel like I can be my own person. Sometimes I really do struggle with being selfish um, and me oriented. So sometimes I'll think about my goals and my dreams over somebody else's. And in Out of My League, Sophia has a hard time with this. She just, she has a hard time with it. That's all I'm going to say. Read the book and you can go on that journey with her as she realizes, hey, it's not just me in this world. <laughs> Anything in particular that gives you inspiration to write? Music definitely gives me inspiration to write. I swear, I will listen to some music and I will instantly feel in the mood to open up my notebook and start writing. Absolutely music. Okay, Grace asked this question and I don't wanna answer it, but it says, Spill, who is your favorite, Elijah or Walsh? How am I supposed to answer this question? Because listen, okay. Elijah is the sweet, artistic, you know, kind of moody, kind of quiet type. Um, he's got some own inner struggles, all that stuff. He is just, he is just sweet. Um, you know, he's the, the best friend you always wanted. Love him to pieces. And then we have Walsh, who is the um, charismatic uh, jock baseball player. He's sweet, he's funny. He, he thinks of these cute, like, little date ideas. He He's just, oh my gosh, no. I'm looking at that, my character art image right now. I'll put it up on the screen. Um, how can you ask me to choose? Okay, who would I, who would I, who would I want to date? Walsh or Elijah? Oh, I don't want to say it. Okay, even though I love the other one to pieces, I would, I, me personally, would want to date Walsh. Uh, he's just, he's just, you know, Walsh is just, <sighs> but then Elijah is, oh no. Grace, why, why, how could you do this to me? Grace, 
Seriously. I know I did it to you guys in a poll on Instagram not that long ago. So that's probably just payback, but oh my god. I love them both. But I guess if I had to choose which one I'd want my happily ever after with, I'd want Walsh. But I still love Eli. I do. I just think I'd want Walsh. Okay, uh, what is your editing and revising process like? It's kind of a long question. I have a few videos up on my YouTube channel. I will link them somewhere along here with what it is like. But yeah, so if you are interested in what my editing and revising process looks like, I'll have my final edits video linked somewhere because that just came out. And I have my beta reading process linked somewhere. And yeah, so very fun. Did you use a literary agent? And that is a no, I did not. And then they asked, how difficult is it to go from a manuscript to published? Honestly, I didn't think it was that hard at all. Well, it's not hard to publish at all. I don't think it was easy to upload to the vendors and work my way through it. Um, KDP is really user-friendly. draft to digital is really user-friendly. Ingram Spark, they actually just updated their um, upload process. So it was actually pretty easy to upload my paperback for If the Room Fits. It wasn't that hard at all. It used to be kind of difficult but this they like did this user-friendly integration whatever it's called um so it wasn't actually that hard at all the formatting was easy because i use vellum um so yeah it wasn't that hard for me at all if you could pick a song to describe each of your books which ones would you choose oh that's a good one. Ooh, okay i would say i'd pick oh fudge so i'm just gonna use my three books for if like water friends for if the broom fits out of my league so for if the broom fits um, I would use Never Really Over by Katy Perry. Great song. Um, for What Are Friends For is You Belong With Me by Taylor Swift, obviously. Um, and then Out of My League, I had a perfect one for Out of My League. I can't remember what it was. I remember, I, I remember listening to it being like, oh, yes, yes. Fudge Nugs. Guys, I don't know. Hang on, let me look. Let me look. Well, Into You by Ariana Grande would be would be pretty cute, I would say. Guys, I don't know what the other one I thought was. Weird. Well, if editor Sarah remembers it, she'll put it on the screen here. Um, fingers crossed she comes in clutch. I don't know. Favorite snack food while writing. I have made it a point to not snack while writing. I used to eat peanut butter M&Ms and I would devour the like party sized bags in one sitting. So now I try not to snack when I'm writing. If I do, if I'm getting hungry, I will eat um, some pop tarts. I eat the chocolate fudge pop tarts. What tropes have you not used yet but plan to? Okay, so um, best friend's brother. There's more. Whenever I think of tropes, my brain kind of just like clicks off. Best friend's brother. Hang on. I haven't really done enemies to lovers yet. I've been thinking about it, but I just have a hard time because it's hard for me to get the transition just right. I've tried it before. So enemies to lovers would be kind of fun. A stuck together trope book would be really fun. I have I don't have a plan to do that yet. But yeah, so I guess for sure best friend's brother. We're getting to the end. I think this is our last question. What types of scenes do you have the hardest time writing? I really struggle with the um, scenes with parents. In all of my books, my characters have kind of a rocky-ish relationship with their parents. What Are Friends For wasn't that bad. Out of My League was just rocky. And then If the Broom Fits, it's going to be rocky. And then my next one, Telling the Perfect Lie, is going to be rocky. And it's not like I'm writing this based on my own own experience with my parents because I have a great relationship with my parents. So that's what makes it so difficult to write those rocky scenes with those with so with my character's parents because like I said I got a great relationship with my parents. They are sweet and um, they always have been so supportive. So those kinds of scenes have been a little bit difficult. I think it's a good kind of difficult. I think parents differently to how I interacted with my parents. That was a big yawn. I do enjoy writing the different kind of family relationships. Um, parents can sometimes take a back seat and which makes total total sense because it's a romance. We're not talking about the parents. But I do like to add that little thread into the story of like friends, parents, love interest. Do you know what I mean? I think those are the hardest scenes for me to write, like when the parents and the, the child are kind of arguing. Like when Sophia was yelling at her parents about not paying attention to her. I, I struggled to reach deep and get those emotions. Those emotions, wait, you gotta be in here for the video! Oh, she's gone. Those emotions were hard for me to tap into, but 
very fun. And don't worry, I've got good family relationships coming up soon in my writing. Anyway, that is all the questions. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and for sending, oops, and for sending in your questions because I have so much fun answering them. I love it to pieces. So I want to do another one of these soon, probably for the release of If the Broom Fits. So go follow me over on Instagram if you want to ask a question for that when that comes up and keep an eye out on my stories. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave it a like, um, a thumbs up, and maybe comment down below if you have a question that I didn't answer, thought something was funny, maybe you, liked, you laughed the struggle of me trying to pick Elijah or Walsh. Oh my gosh. But likes and comments and subscribes help my channel so much. And I am, we're getting closer to the big number, y'all. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Anyway, that's all for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.